Lucky Strike presents the Jack Benny program. But first, here's an important message from the National Tobacco Tax Research Council. Smokers, next time you buy cigarettes, remember that over 800,000 tobacco farm families thank you for contributing to their support. And remember also that you help support your government, federal, state, and local. When you buy a pack of cigarettes, the federal government gets eight cents. Most local and state governments get three or four cents more. That's better than a 50% tax on every cigarette you smoke. Yes, in buying cigarettes, over half your packs go for tax. And now the Jack Benny program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky. Get better taste today. Friends, seeing is believing. And you yourself can see that Luckies are made better to taste better. Just take a Lucky Strike and any other cigarette and carefully remove the paper from both by tearing down the seam from end to end. In tearing, be very careful not to disturb the tobacco inside the paper. Now look for the difference. Look at that perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco taken from the Lucky. See how round and firm and fully packed it is with long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco. See how free the Lucky is of annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. This is your proof. Luckies are made better to taste better, to taste fresh and clean and smooth. No doubt about it, Luckies taste better. So to enjoy the fresh, clean taste of fine tobacco, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, since Jack has been in television, he wants to keep his weight down. At the moment, he's at his home in Beverly Hills in a steam cabinet trying to reduce. Rochester, I can stand it a little hotter. Turn up the steam, will you? Yes, sir. That's enough. Not too hot. Gee, I'm glad I bought this steam cabinet. How long have I been in here? About ten minutes. I hope you're not taking too much. Well, what do the instructions say? Let's see. I'll read them. Men up to 20 years old stay in cabinet not more than a half hour. A half hour? Men up to 25 years, no more than 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Men up to 30 years of age, no more than 15 minutes. 15. Men up to... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what are you mm, mm about? According to this chart, I should have just dipped you in like a tea bag. <laughs> Oh, stop. Gee, it's awfully hot in this cabinet. I think I'll get out. I better not open it for a couple of minutes. Why, haven't I had enough? Yeah, but the potatoes aren't done yet. <laughs> oh, darn it. Don't blame me, boss. It was your own idea. As long as we had the heat, you didn't want to waste it. Well... What a time I had talking you out of holding that leg of lamb on your lap. <laughs> I was just trying to economize, that's all. Anyway, it's too hot. Open it up, will you? I'm getting out. Yes, sir. Phew. Gee, it's good to get out of here. Uh-oh, I'm afraid the heat was on a little too high. Why, am I red? Boss, if you had a pitchfork in your hand, you'd scare me to death. <laughs> well, I feel fine. Uh, hand me my robe, Rochester. Yes, sir. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Jack, the reason I called is that Wednesday I'm giving a little party at my house, and I want to know if you can come. Well, certainly, Mary, thanks. Who else are you having? Well, I'm going to ask the whole cast of our show. Your producer, your writers, and also your... My, my writers? Yes, I thought you might like to have them there. Why? Well, you want to be the life of the party, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, they are funny looking, you know. <laughs> well, I better hang up. I've got a lot of people to call. Bye, Jack. So long, Mary, and thanks. Uh, Rochester, next Wednesday night, Miss Livingston is giving a party, so I won't... Rochester? Rochester! Here I am, boss. Where were you? I heard the postman, so I went to get the mail. Oh. What came? Just some bills circular in your copy of Look Magazine. Oh, let me see it. Hey, Rochester. Rochester, there's a picture of you and me on the cover. On the cover of Look? Let me see it, boss. Yeah! <laughs> what are you laughing at?
laughing at? I bet I'm the only man in the world who ever had his picture on the cover of a magazine and couldn't afford to buy it. <laughs> oh, you do all right. I don't know. I just bought a toothbrush on, into on installment plan. <laughs> Entallment, what would that mean? <laughs> well, that's not my fault. If you saved your... Rochester, see who that is while I finish getting dressed. Yes, sir. Sure and be guard, it's a pleasure to greet such a fine broth of a lad on this day, the likes of which I haven't seen in years. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> who is it, Rochester? It ain't Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Well, who is it? Sure, and to the son of the old side himself, Dennis Patrick Aloysius Jeremiah McNulty or Day. <laughs> oh, come on in, Dennis. And look, kid, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Aren't you a little early with your brogue? No, I'm practicing. I'll have to talk like this all day tomorrow. You have to talk like that all day? Yeah, if you don't, they rip off your shamrock, take a shillelagh, and break all your Morton Downey records. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, Dennis, I've always thought that St. Patrick's Day comes at the wrong time of the year. Well, yeah, what do you mean? Well, how can March 17th be dedicated to the wearing of the green when only two days before the government takes it all away from you? <laughs> now, Dennis, let's stop talking. Just let me hear the song you're going to do on the program. Yes, sir. Hold it, kid. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Mary again. Oh, what is it, Mary? Well, I called Dennis's house to invite him to my party, and his mother told me he's at your house. Is he there? Yes. Dennis, Mary wants you on the phone. Yeah, these dames, they won't let me alone. <laughs> Never mind, just talk to her. Yes, sir. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Look, I'm having a party on Wednesday night. Would you like to come? On Wednesday? Yes. Uh, do you mind if I bring my neighbor, Hetty Lamar? Your neighbor, Hetty Lamar? Yeah. Dennis, I happen to know Hetty Lamar lives in Benedict Canyon and you live in Westwood. Oh, yeah, Hetty Lamar's house is right next to mine. Since when? Ever since the rain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dennis, bring anyone who floats by. Gee, thanks, Mary. Goodbye. Bye. Well, say, Mr. Benny, when I go to Mary's party, I'm going to bring... Hello? Dennis, I forgot to tell you something. What? Don't drive Jack nuts. Just sing your song. Okay. Dennis. Quiet, I'm going to sing. Oh, oh, well, go right ahead. Things 
You certainly picked an appropriate song for St. Patrick's Day. And I might add, Dennis, that as time goes on, your voice gets better and better. Well, if it's so good, how about a raise? <laughs> you know, Dennis, on second thought, instead of singing Glockamore on the program, why don't you sing the song I wrote? When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. may not sell any copies, but it sure gets rid of pests. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss? I'm awfully hungry. What does my diet say I can have for lunch? A piece of rye crisp and a hard-boiled egg. That's all I'm supposed to eat for lunch? No, you just feel it for lunch. You eat it for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. That's the strictest diet I have. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson. What's the matter, Phil? You sound depressed. Yeah, I am. I just came back from the doctor. The doctor? What's wrong? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I became allergic to something, and I broke out in a rash on my back. It's just something awful. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, so I went to the doctor, and every day he's been testing me to find out what I'm allergic to, and today he found out. <laughs> well... What are you allergic to? Alcohol. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, only way I can get rid of this itch is to stop drinking entirely. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? Grow long fingernails, I'm in for a lot of scratches. <laughs> what I thought. Hey, by the way, Jackson, I've been meaning to tell you I saw you on TV last week and, man, you look wonderful. Well, thanks, Phil, but I don't deserve all the credit. I had the best makeup man in the country. Oh, really? Yes, he's the same one who made up President Truman for his last television speech. <laughs> yeah, hold it a minute. Why would President Truman want to use makeup? Phil, if you were asking for $8 billion, you'd want to look good, too. <laughs> Alice would give it to me regardless of how I look. Well, she can probably... Hmm. Hello? Oh, it's me again, Jack. Oh, what is it now, Mary? Well, I called Phil's house and nobody answered, and I was wondering if he's over there. Yes, he is. Just a second. Phil, it's for you. It's Mary. Oh. Hello, Livy, you doll, you. <laughs> Hello, Hambone. <laughs> look, Phil... I'm having a party on Wednesday, and I'd like you and Alice to come. Yeah, okay, Liv, we'll be there. Hey, say, uh, uh, you want me to bring my orchestra boys along, too? Uh, no, no, Phil, I haven't got room for 36 more people. What do you mean, 36? I only got 18 fellas in my band. Yeah, what about their parole officers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I almost forgot about them cats. Uh... <laughs> uh, look, Mary, uh... Uh, Mary, can I at least bring Remley? No. Sammy, my drummer? No. Now, wait a minute. I've got to bring at least one of my boys. Why? Somebody's got to scratch my back. <laughs> Phil, I don't know what you're talking about, but if your back itches, can't you scratch it yourself? No, I'll be using both hands to pour the stuff that makes it itch. <laughs> Phil, I don't understand. Anyway, will you come to my party? Natch, I'll be there, Liv. Thanks. Okay, bye. 
Mary, uh, Mary invites you to party too, eh, Phil? Yeah. Your lunch is ready, Mr. Benny. Oh, thanks, Rochester. Hey, Jackson, I'm kind of hungry. I think I'll stay and have some lunch with you. Oh. Oh, you want to eat here, huh? When you say I beg your pardon. <laughs> it works every time. I got the song right that time. <laughs> when you say I beg your pardon. Gee, I mustn't forget my own melody. Now, uh, what about my lunch, Rochester? Shall I bring it in here, or will you feel it in the dining room? <laughs> Look, Rochester, I'm not going to stick to that silly diet. I want something to eat, and I'm not going to worry. If... Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Come on in, fellas. Hmm. Well, Don, since you brought the sportsman with you, I suppose you want to hear the want me to hear the commercial they're going to do. Eh? Oh, yes, Jack, and you'll be proud of this one. We stayed up all night and really came up with something sensational. Well, good, good. But, Don... I had a number I wanted the boys to do a commercial on. You know that new song called, uh, Cry. Cry? While they're singing, be happy, go lucky? I ought to slap your face. <laughs> oh, well, Don, uh, what's the song you have prepared? Well, since tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day, we're going to do a medley of Irish songs. Oh, that's fine. Who gave you the idea? Dennis. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it, boys. <laughs> Piper's tune Oh, for one of those Good old luckies What has happened To F.E. Boone <laughs> You can have your carry dancing I'll stay home with a lucky strike Made of light and fine tobacco That's the smoke For Pat and Mike Oh, to puff on it Just one puff on it Fills me heart with joy. Sure, a lucky is better tasting. That's why luckies will please your friends. Like a lucky for smoking pleasure. Round and firm and with no loose ends. They say Ireland is heaven and we're not a doubting it. That why dear Mrs. is always a shout and a skip us a lucky and we'll pick Kentucky where they go to back us a light and so fine. Ellis is Ellis is good, and on the next show, I'd like you and the sportsman to make a commercial out of the song I wrote. When you say I beg your... <laughs> How do you like that? They all got out at once. Oh, well. Gosh, I'm hungry. These diets are murder. I'm gonna eat something. Oh, Rochester! Rochester, come here a minute, will you? Yes, boss. Look, Rochester, I'm really hungry. What's in the refrigerator? Dennis Day. <laughs> what? When he left, he opened the wrong door <laughs> Oh, well, leave him there for a while I don't want to hear his explanation of how it happened Anyway, Rochester, just make me a sandwich out of, uh... Boss, why are you staring the... out the window? What? Why are you staring out the window? Those two men Those two men across the street They just stepped off the curb and they're coming this way Yes? We're from the income tax department. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, you're the same men who were here last year. Uh, come in. Your name is, uh, is Mr. Kearns, isn't it? Yes, and this is my assistant, Mr. Wright. Wright? How do you do? <laughs> 
Uh, gentlemen, if you've come about my income tax, I've already sent it in. You know. oh, Mr. Benny, we're not here to discuss this year's taxes. We'd like to talk to you again about last year's. <laughs> last year's? I thought that was settled. We went over it so many times. Then when I didn't hear from you again, I, I assumed that nothing was wrong. I thought that everything was right. How do you do? <laughs> Mr. Benny, we're still trying to help you. Help me? And we feel that you must have made a mistake in your last year's return. A mistake? Yes. We can't understand how a man who earned over $300,000 could only spend $17 for entertainment. <laughs> well, that's all I spent. I can prove it to you. Rochester, get my books out of my desk drawer, will yes, you? Yes, sir. There's no need I'm going to prove it to you for once and for all. But, Mr. Benny... This drawer here on the left? No, the right. How do you do? <laughs> now, cut that out. For heaven's sake. <laughs> Mr. Benny, no one shouts at a tax collector. <laughs> oh, I'm... I'm sorry. Mr. Benny, believe me, we're here to help you. I know, I know. <laughs> yes, we don't think you're taking full advantage of deductible items. I'm not? Here are your books, boss. Thanks. I take your butler, for instance. You mean Rochester? Yes. Even though he's your butler, if he assists you in any way pertaining to the production of your radio or television shows or any of your other business activities, then that portion of his pay is deductible. You mean... Uh... Yes. In other words, under those conditions, you could split his salary. Split my salary? <laughs> yes. Gentlemen, they've split infinities and they've split the atom. But I defy anybody to split my salary. <laughs> Rochester, this is no time... Uh, just a moment, Mr. Benny. Rochester, are you inferring that your salary is that small? Well, in Santa Anita colloquialism... It starts off pretty good, but something always happens to it coming around the far turn. Well, what do you mean? Well, every payday, Mr. Benny sits me down and explains how he has to make certain deductions out of my salary. So much for withholding, so much for unemployment insurance, and so much for Social Security. Then he further explains that what remains is known as take-home pay. That's right, take-home pay. Then he points out that I'm living at his home, so he takes it. <laughs> Mr. Benny, is that right? How do you do? I can play that game, too, brother. Uh, Mr. Benny, I just looked in the book that Rochester brought you, and uh, there's an item that interests me. Uh, which item is that? Uh, this one here. Income from violin engagement, approximately $3. <laughs> yes, I filled in that entry myself. But why is it approximately $3? Well, I was playing my violin at the opening of a butcher shop. And they gave me two pounds of meat. They gave you two pounds of meat for playing your violin? They didn't give it to him. Somebody hit him with a round stick. <laughs> well, I brought it home. What's the difference? Uh, that brings up a point, Mr. Benny. If you receive revenue playing your violin, then the money you spend on its upkeep and repair is deductible. It is? Yes. You see, Mr. Benny, we're trying to help you. I know, I know. <laughs> for instance, Mr. Benny, how many strings do you buy for your violin? Rosin, pegs, bridges, repairing your bow, and so forth. Well, I don't know. You see, I get everything through my violin teacher. He keeps track of all that. Well, in that case, in order to help you, uh, would you mind if we talk to your violin teacher? No, no, not at all. His name is Professor LeBlanc. His uh, address is 6212 Iman Avenue. It's on the other side of town. We'll find it. Come on, Joe. Well, Bill, there it is. 6212 Iman Avenue. Yeah, what a run-down looking Roman house. Let's go in. Well, here's his room. Professor LeBlanc, violin teacher. Yeah. Professor LeBlanc? We? Oui. We're from the income tax department. Income tax? 
Income tax. Gentlemen, look at me. See for yourself. I am barefoot. My clothes are torn. Professor. I sleep on a hard spring. I ate the mattress. <laughs> Income tax. Professor. Professor. <laughs> Control yourself. Uh, yes, we're here to talk to you about one of your pupils, uh, Mr. Benny. Ah, uh, about Mr. Benny? Come in, come in. Perhaps I can help you send him to the Bastille. <laughs> No, 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 Professor. We just want to find out how much money Mr. Benny spent on his violin. Money? <laughs> yes. Don't you have any books? Uh-oh, oui. I have written three books about Mr. Benny, but the publishers would not believe them. <laughs> no, no, we mean records, financial records. We want to know what, uh, uh, what expenses Mr. Benny's incurred in the upkeep of his violin. Oh, that I do not know. I just charge him so much for the lesson, and that includes everything. Oh, well, perhaps we could break that down. Uh, how much do you charge him for the lesson? Well, he is supposed to give me two dollars. But before every lesson, Monsieur Benny sits me down and explains how he has to make certain deductions out of my salary. <laughs> so much for withholding, so much for unemployment insurance, and so much for social security. Then he further explains that what remains is known as take uh, home... Come on, Bill, we've heard this before. <laughs> yes, thank you, Professor LeBlanc. Uh, you're welcome, gentlemen. Oh, uh, by the way, Professor, we've never heard Mr. Benny play the violin. How does he sound? Sound? Well, gentlemen, let me explain. The strings on a violin are made of cat gut, and the violin bow is made from horse hair. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to know how Mr. Benny violin playing sounds, think of a cat being stepped on by a horse. <laughs> yes, we understand. Well, goodbye, Professor LeBlanc. Goodbye, gentlemen. Say, Bill. Yes, Joe? Why are we going to all this trouble just to help Mr. Benny? I don't know. There's something about those big blue eyes that gets you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Back, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, seeing is believing. And you can see for yourself clearly and beyond any doubt that Luckies are made better to taste better. Carefully remove the paper from a Lucky Strike by tearing down the seam from end to end. In tearing, be very careful not to disturb the tobacco inside the paper. Then gently lift out the cylinder of fresh, clean, fine tobacco. Now, in exactly the same way, remove the tobacco from any other cigarette. Compare it with a perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco taken from the Lucky. See how round and firm and fully packed the Lucky is with long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco. See how free the Lucky is of excessive air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry. There is your proof that Luckies are made better to taste better, to taste fresh and clean and smooth. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. So to enjoy the fresh, clean taste of fine tobacco, be happy, go Lucky! Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Good night, everybody. The Jack Leonard program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company.